Welcome back, podcast friends. And today, I really want to talk in this episode about something very, very important. And that's the thing that nothing stays the same. Nothing stays the same. You are you are not the same person today that you were yesterday. You're either better than you were yesterday or you're worse. Even if it's in a little minuscule points, as time goes on, you'll find if you don't change your ways, you will see a definite difference on whether you have been becoming better or becoming worse because everything is in a process, a constant process of either improving or declining. And the good thing is usually when things are in a process of declining, you always get some kind of warning signs and you can take this as anything. Just say you're driving down the road and you hear a very high pitched squeal squeal coming from one of your tires. Good chance that this is probably the warning clip on your brake pads. So you have these thick brake pads, and as you keep using your brakes, they get narrow and narrow and narrow, and there's a little warning clip that'll come up, and it'll make a high-pitched squeal. Well, if you go in and you get it taken care of right away, now you can just get your brake pads changed. It's not very expensive, and you're on your way. However, if you start ignoring it and ignoring it, and all of a sudden, you don't even notice it anymore because every single time you put your brakes on, that's the noise that it makes. It's just that's the way it is. But what's happening is now those brake pads are getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And now all of a sudden they're so thin that the warning clips are now they're digging into your rotors. So now you're going to have to have your rotors turned, which is going to be more expensive. If you continue to ignore it, it digs deeper and deeper to where you have to have a whole brand new brake job. And this is when you run into trouble. Okay. If you had just taken care of it back at that warning clip, you wouldn't have been at all the expense and all the time and, and all the headache. Same thing. Let's say you're getting a cold. Okay. So you're getting a cold and you start having a runny nose. Well, you don't do anything about the runny nose. And so now you start running all day long. You lay down at night to sleep. And now all this mucus starts dripping down the back of your throat. You still don't pay attention. So all of a sudden you start coughing because this mucus. So now you cough and cough for night after night until your throat becomes so raw, so raw and irritated that now bacteria and viruses can set in there because you broke the integrity of your of your skin. And so now you have to worry about a bacterial infection or a viral infection to where and that's when it goes into bronchitis or pneumonia. And this is where if you had just stopped it back at the runny nose. Then you wouldn't have to worry about the, run, the mucus running down the back of your throat at night. Then you wouldn't have had to worry about coughing and tearing your throat up. So you could have stopped it very, very easily. Now, warning signs are, are good and bad. You could have pain is another warning sign, but you have to be very, very careful because pain is a good warning sign telling you that there's something wrong. There's something wrong in your body. There's something that's not right. And it's important to realize that. And yes, we have medication that it can take care of pain, but that doesn't, pain is just a symptom. It's just a symptom that there's something else going wrong. So if you take so much pain meds that you don't feel the pain, you're going to continuously do whatever it is your body's doing that's causing the pain. And it's actually going to make this worse. And just to let you realize how important pain is, that's the problem with patients who have diabetes or diabetic foot because they they haven't taken care of their health they have not been eating healthy they've been eating most of their food has been coming from man-made ultra processed poison and that's been making their body toxic and now it also makes their nerves where their nerves don't function properly so people who have diabetes they're walking around and they say they step on a nail or attack or they stub their toe or, or cut it on something but they don't have any pain they don't feel any pain because their nerves are damaged due to the diabetes. So when they don't have pain, they have no idea there's anything wrong. They just keep walking on it and walking on it, getting more and more infected and infected. And they never, ever just, just stop to look at the bottom of their feet. And if they had, they see this huge ulcer that's been growing. Sometimes they still don't. And by the time they come into us in the hospital, this ulcer has eaten all the way through to the bone. And this is why you have a lot of these diabetics who are getting their feet amputated, their legs amputated, because they did not have the pain sensor at the beginning because they didn't hear their warning signs early on about their nutrition. 
So they let it go. Now they're not listening to the warning signs that now they have no pain feelings underneath their feet, but they still don't take care of their feet. And now they start having amputations. OK, so it's a process. Everything happens for a process. Another one um, could be a temperature. Temperature, again, is a great thing. A temperature is wonderful to have. That is God's way of, of killing all bacteria, all viruses. So when you get a temperature, when you start having a fever, your temperature is going up. This is actually this is not a problem. This is a symptom. You, there's something underlying. There's an underlying bacterial infection or a, or viral infection or fungal infection or something. There's something underlying that's causing your temperature to go up. So in the, in the case of bacteria viruses, that's great. You want that temperature to go up because heat will kill viruses. Heat will kill bacteria. Most viruses, most bacteria. Okay. Heat will kill it. That's why God makes us produce a fever because it kills the infection underneath. However, we have things that can stop a fever. So we think we're doing something good by giving Tylenol or ibuprofen to bring a fever down when really what we're really doing is making the infection worse because now our own body's mechanism of killing bacteria and viruses, we've just stopped it by giving Tylenol or ibuprofen. Okay. So sometimes it's good to give these things. You don't want so much pain that, that you aren't, um, that you're not inhibited by it. But you do want to have enough pain that you still feel that you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing and it's causing your body not to be able to heal as well. Same thing with the temperature. You actually that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother subject on if you ever have if you ever have to worry about temperature. But anyway, just because you can do something doesn't mean it's right. Now, all of these are giving you the warning signs. Like I said, the warning sign of the pain, the warning sign of the fever. Now, there's also warning signs of other things that you do, other habits that you may have. Say you like cocaine. Okay, the first warning sign that this is bad is the fact that you buy cocaine. Okay, that's that's the first warning sign. But then what happens is you start having this cocaine. Then you love the effect of this cocaine. So you want to have more. And so you take more. And then the more you take, the more resistant you become to the pleasure. So you have to take more and more and more to get that same feeling. And when you find out that you're having to take more and more, this is a sign that you are now addicted. And the other sign is now that you're addicted, it starts taking up all your thoughts. You can't wait till you get some more. You don't know when you're going to be able to get some more. You start spending all your money um, buying more. And then now that you had more, more money, you lose the drive to work. Now you don't you don't want to get up and work, but you need more money. So now this is when criminal acts come in, say stealing or whatever, and then you end up going to jail. And all this, this whole process could have been stopped way back if you saw the warning sign that you're buying cocaine. That's a problem. Now let's match this to eating sugar and fructose, which you may think is a huge jump, but it is not a huge jump at all because sugar and fructose affects your pleasure center in the same way that cocaine does. It lights up the exact same spots. So the same thing goes. Now you buy this ultra processed food, this man-made food that you get on the grocery store shelves in the box, bottle, bag, and can fill with all these toxins. And you start eating this stuff and you love the taste of sugar. You start thinking sugar is wonderful. So you start eating all this, all this ultra processed food and you're loving it. And so you want to buy more. And now when you eat it, as soon as you get done eating it, you're thinking, hmm, I wonder when I'm going to get some more. And in about one to two hours, you start thinking about when you're going to eat again. In about three to four hours, you actually eat more of the same stuff. Now, when you keep doing this and you find out it takes more and more and more to give the same pleasure, now, again, you know that you're addicted. You're addicted, so it takes up your thoughts. You think, man, I can't wait till I'm going to eat some more. I wonder where I'm going to eat. I'm going to stop by somewhere on the way home. I'm going to go buy a vending machine. Oh, look, somebody brought food in you know, to our, to our company so I can eat that. And you start thinking about this all the time. And then you find out that you are spending all your money buying this, which is not food, but none of the stuff that they sell on the grocery store shelves basically is food. That food means nutrients for your body. And this man-made crap has no nutrient value whatsoever. It, it, is, it is horrible. It's all ultra processed carbs, fructose and glucose, which is sugar, high fructose corn syrup, 
and vegetable and seed oils, which are extremely inflammatory to your body. And I've done past podcasts talking about each one of these in detail of how that is. But what happens is you eat this, this stuff that has no nutrient value. So your body is always hungry. You're constantly hungry because you still haven't given your body the nutrients it needs. And now you find out that, um, that you're addicted. Now you know you're addicted. There's no nutritional value. And the first warning sign, just like with the cocaine, is the fact that you bought ultra-processed man-made food in a box, bottle, bag, or can. Just like with cocaine, that's your first warning sign is you're buying this stuff. And if you are, chances are you're addicted. Now, with this, you also get a second warning sign. You start becoming obese. You become heavier and heavier and heavier. That's warning sign two. Warning sign three is you start getting put on medications. You start getting put on medications for blood pressure, for high glucose, for high cholesterol, for anxiety, for depression, for Alzheimer's, for uh, stress, for inflammation, because all of those and many, many more things that happen is all because of nutrition that you eat. Liver failure, fatty liver disease, kidney failure, dialysis, cardiac events. All this is due to the nutrition that you eat. If you're on any medications where you have to take this medication every single day or every single week, and you're on it every single month for the rest of your life, these are called maintenance meds. Maintenance meds are usually always, always due to poor nutrition. If you change your nutrition, you can get off these, what they call maintenance meds. They're maintenance meds because nobody will change your nutrition. And so therefore they will be on these medications forever. There will be added more medications as time goes on and higher and higher doses, which all of them has the extreme amount of adverse effects. And I'm going to do a whole nother podcast just on adverse effects of medications, but you've got to see what, this is the process that goes on. So warning sign three, you're on medications. You're going to doctor's offices all the time. You're going to get hospitalized all the time. You have multiple organ damage. You end up with type two diabetes, multiple organ da damage, all this. These are your warning signs. And if it hasn't gone too far, if it's already gone into, the, into where you have organ damage, you may have gone too far without listening to warning signs. So it's very important that you listen to warning sign one. Are you actually buying this man-made junk that's in box, bottle, bag, and can with no nutrient value whatsoever? That's warning sign one. Are you heavier now than you were 10 years ago, five years ago, one year ago? If you are heavier now than you were then, that's warning sign two. You are in the process. You are getting worse. Warning sign three is the medications. If you're already on medications for anything that I just said, you are, you're getting late in the game and you really need to be aware. You need to change quickly what you need to do. And this isn't your fault. I want to make sure you know this isn't your fault. Now, the difference with cocaine and food is time. With cocaine, you can see the, the, the decline of someone very quickly. Once they get addicted to cocaine, their life declines very quickly. So it's easy to see that. However, with food, it, it takes a long time. It usually takes around 20 to 30 years of eating this horrible, horrible food that's toxic to your bodies before you actually start seeing the obesity really racking up and the medications racking up. And that is a problem because since it takes so long, people don't really pay attention. And that's why I'm trying to get everybody to pay attention to what's going on. And again, this isn't your fault. The food companies and drug companies know this. They are trying to get you addicted to this food as soon as possible. What do I mean by as soon as possible? As soon as that baby comes out of the womb and sometimes before actually, but as soon as the baby comes out of the womb, they are trying to tell you that the most the best food, the most, the miracle food of all, the superfood is breast milk. It has all the, all the food, all the nutrients that a baby needs, and it's in the form that it needs. But now we have all these drug companies, food companies making all this baby food telling you that's the most healthy. And if you look at this, a lot of these baby foods, they have, they have high fructose corn syrup in them. Some of them up to 50% high fructose corn syrup. 
It's the same ultra processed carbohydrates, same vegetable oils and seed oils. They put the same crap that they put in your food. That's what they're putting in baby food also. So please be aware if you start your children off on baby food, baby formula, I'm talking about baby formula, and then the baby food that's in the jars that goes right along the same thing, they are getting you addicted early. And if you don't believe me, ask any little child that's walking around you if they love sugar, if they love candy, without a doubt, they probably do. And they're going to give it to themselves over and over and over until they start running down this process of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and then on to metabolic syndrome and organ failure. And that's why we used to not see a lot of these things. And people were like in their 60s and 70s. And now we're starting to see this come up and when patients are in their 20s and 30s because we're starting them off so young with this horrible, horrible food. So what you have to do is you have to realize that when you get into eating the sugar and the sweet taste, then all of a sudden you're going to start buying all this kind of food from the grocery stores instead of buying real natural God-made food, real meat with real animal fat, um, Greek yogurt, you know, Basically, that's about it. You can have some fruits and vegetables, very little, but just make sure that it's real food. It is not this man-made chemical sludge that they are feeding to everybody. Because in that food, you're going to have your sugar and fructose. You're going to have your vegetable and seed oils, and you're going to have your ultra-processed carbohydrates. Like I said, the three main ingredients that are killing us, that is exactly what processed food is, ultra-processed food is made up of. Then they throw in other great chemicals like maltodextrin. Artificial sweeteners, artificial colorings, artificial flavors, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. There are so many chemicals in this food that we're eating, even in our produce. You've got to be careful of all the produce. And now the new coatings and these sprays, these chemical sprays that they're putting on everything. You can't even eat fruit and vegetables from the grocery stores anymore because of all the chemicals that they put in this stuff. And you cannot wash it off. But anyway, so that was a side note. But this stuff is killing us. And so what we have to do is we have to figure out, are we carbohydrate addicted or are we not? And you'll know because if you try to try to read, um, try to get off of carbohydrates, like people who are going through the ketogenic diet, which is a very good diet. I'm 100% I'm for it. The ketogenic diet, carnivore diet, these are all fantastic. They give you all the nutrients you want and they, they don't give you all, this, all the toxic sludge. However, when you're eating, when you start a keto diet, they call it keto flu because you start kind of getting lightheaded and dizzy. And sometimes, you know, you just don't feel right. They have turned this keto flu to make it look like keto is bad. And that is not keto flu. That is carbohydrate withdrawal. That's what you're seeing. It's just like when you try to withdraw off cocaine, when you try off, draw, withdraw off anything, when you go through withdrawal, it's going to feel bad. And you do go through withdrawal on carbohydrates when you try to get off of them because you are truly physically, chemically addicted to it. So you need to be aware of the warning signs so you can get off of it as soon as possible. Now, this process can be a positive one also because once you realize that sugar is poisoning and carbohydrates and, you know, that all this carbohydrates, glucose, all this stuff is poison and you realize that man-made food is toxic to your body, then all of a sudden you can start changing what you're doing. And if you find out there you're eating all the time, eating every three to four hours, your weight's getting higher. You know, if you notice all this, if you start doing, you'll know if you're carb addicted, if you wait, if you have a party and you wait till everybody leaves and then you go through and you start eating everything, or if you get up and you, you eat, right after everybody else goes to bed, you get up and eat or you get up in the middle of the night and eat, or you have a little secret place where you keep snacks so no one else knows. These are all signs that you are carbohydrate addicted and you need to get off those carbohydrates very, very soon. This is just like, um, if you've ever heard the, um, and, and this is an old, old saying, and I know that, but there was a flood one time and there was this, this very Christian man and the, the water started coming up, started coming up close to his to his porch. And so this guy came by in a canoe and said, hey, he said, get in the canoe and I'll, I'll paddle you to safety. And the guy's like, no, no, I'm going to wait here because God's going to save me. So the guy goes on. Well, the water keeps getting higher and higher and higher. So now all of a sudden the water gets up to like the second floor. This guy's up on the second second floor balcony and the water's up that high. And another guy comes by in a motorboat, you know, comes by with a bass boat and said, hey, Come on, get in. I'll take you to safety. He's like, no, no, I'm going to wait here. God's going to save me. 
So the water just rises and rises and rises until it gets up to the roof. So the guy's standing on his roof and now a helicopter comes by. I said, get in. I'll take you to safety. The guy's like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. He said, God's going to save me. So all of a sudden the water goes up more and the man drowns. So now the man drives, goes to heaven. He's talking to God. He's like, what did you do, God? He said, I've been a faithful man. He said, I thought you were going to save me from this. And God said, I sent you a canoe. I sent you a boat and I sent you a helicopter. What else could I do? As crazy as that is, that's exactly what's going on here. God's giving you warning signs. He's giving you warning signs if you're addicted. He's giving you warning signs if you start becoming obese. He's giving you warning signs if you get started and put on medications. Please don't be crazy. Listen to the warning signs and change what you're doing. And remember, we talked about changing. The way you're going to change is remember there, you can't change the circumstances that happen to you. All you can change is your thoughts. But if you, you change your thoughts, then you're going to be able to change your feelings. If you change your feelings, you'll change your actions. If you change your actions, you'll say change your results. So if you have these old thoughts of, man, the taste of sweet is the best taste in the world. I love the taste of sweet. And, oh, I love the convenience how food is just in box, bottles, bags, cans, and fast food restaurants. I can eat this stuff anytime I want to. So if that's your thought, then your feelings are going to be, oh, man, I can't wait to eat some more. This stuff tastes wonderful. And, oh, I love the convenience of getting my food. Anytime I, I'm hungry, I've got access to food. And then your actions are going to be, eh, I don't need to plan my meals. I've got food around me all the time. Just, just eat what, what's convenient. I'm too busy to eat healthy. And it's like, oh, and I don't have time to worry about fixing food or going to the grocery store. So I'm just going to take my family to a fast food restaurant and feed them that. So what are your results from that? You become obese and you make your children obese. Then you end up with type 2 diabetes. Then you end up with metabolic syndrome. Then you end up on multiple medications, multiple doctor's visits, multiple, multiple hospitalizations, multiple organ damage, and then multiple organ failure and death. Okay, that is that's the process. Now, what if you change your thoughts? What if you say, instead of saying, oh, I love the taste of sweet, what if you say exactly what is true? The taste of sweet in my mouth means I just put poison in my mouth. Sugar is poison and sugar is poison, okay? Sugar is poison and there's a great, great um, YouTube video that you can walk, watch. It's by Dr. Robert Lustig. He's a pediatric endocrinologist out of uh, UCL. Um, uh, where is he? Yeah, I'll get that to you. But um, listen to his. It's called Sugar, the Bitter Truth. And it will tell you exactly why fructose is poison, which is what 50% of sugar is. But um, what you need to do is you need to start thinking sugar is poison. The taste of sweet is poison. Fast food is for people who do not prioritize their health or the health of their family. They don't really care what kind of nutrition they're giving them. So then if you change the, the thought to that, now your feelings are going to be, I love myself too much to put that poison in my body. And I'd rather really prepare food in advance for my food so I can give them healthy nutrition that their body needs. That's the feelings you're going to have. It's like, I am trying to make myself better and my family better then your actions are going to be, you're not going to eat it if it tastes sweet. If you put something in your mouth and it tastes sweet, realize that it's a taste of poison. Please don't eat anymore. Take that. You don't have to take that out of mouth or you can, whatever the situation is. But you need to realize the taste of sweet is not good. The taste of sweet is poison. And you'll start planning your meals the weekend before and also the night before your family and you will have nutritious, healthy meals that you can feel good about that. You're sending them off knowing that you're avoiding all these, the toxicity of now and also of getting your children started in this process where they're going to have to worry about their health down the road. And as far as the results, now the results, if you truly do that, if you truly think of, of sugar as a taste of poison, and you think fast foods are horrible for your family. So you're going to, you're going to not give your family fast food. You're going to prepare their meals. You're going to look ahead. Now the results that are going to happen is you're not going to be obese. You actually may be, your weight will probably go down. Your health will go up. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel cleaner. You're going to have more energy. You're going to attract other people who feel good. You're going to attract those people to you. So you may have actually end up with a whole different, 
set of friends, friends who do care about their health. You're not going to have any need for blood pressure medication, no diabetes medication, cholesterol, doctor's visits, hospitalizations. You will not be on any medications. I am 61 years old and I am not on a single medication and I will never be on a medication in, in, unless there's something that, that God knows that I don't know. And <laughs> pretty sure there's a lot that God knows that I don't know. However, if you just stick with this, you will feel better about yourself. You're on track to others. You're going to, you're going to have a better outlook on life. So what do you do? How do you do it? Now I've told you what you need to do. Realize if you're in a process, realize if you need to change and see if maybe next year you can actually be better than you are this year. And five years down the road, you can be better than you are right now. That's my goal. So first thing you can do, and we've already talked about this, the number one thing, if you truly are sugar addicted, I guarantee you're probably addicted to soda pop or fruit juice or any of this other sugar sweetened beverages. And not just sugar, even artificial sweeteners. If you're a true addict, artificial sweeteners will still give you that taste of sweet, which still makes you reach for bad food that has that same taste. So that's why if you're truly addicted, I would say stay away from artificial sweeteners, which just is another chemical you're putting in your body anyway, that your body has to deal with and doesn't know anything about. So, but you're also putting that taste of sweet that starts this whole process. So if you're truly addicted, if you are obese, if you have organ failure, if you're in, if you are on medications for anything that you have to take the same medication over and over for the rest of your life, you're addicted. And I, I would highly advise not even having artificial sweeteners in your mouth. Then you need to find healthy alternatives. The first thing you want to do is anything that you eat, because snacking is a big problem. If you can go without snacking, which if you eat real food, real meat with real fat, that's going to stay in your stomach for longer. It's going to stay in your intestines longer. It's going to actually give your body the nutrients it needs. So all those together means you're not getting hungry. I don't get hungry. I eat once a day and that's all I eat. Okay. I may eat a second meal because I'm trying to increase my protein intake. But you, you'll find you will not get hungry when you actually give your body the nutrients it needs. That's why you're hungry, because you never give it nutrients. So your body keeps you hungry. Say, come on, come on, I need, I need nutrients. So be aware of that. So have some healthy alternatives. Instead of having this junk in your box, bottle, bags, cans, you know, things that are in your cupboards, eat things that would be in your refrigerator. That's where you should be going. You shouldn't really have any food in your in your cupboards at all. In fact, if you're in your cupboards, they probably are not food. It's probably just this man-made chemical crud. Um, so have little things like little bitty meatballs, you know, have a stack of meatballs or deviled eggs or hard-boiled eggs or hamburger patties or Greek yogurt or protein shakes. Uh, you can have scrambled eggs. I mean, there's so many different varieties of, of good, healthy protein that you can actually be eating. And, and don't forget your fat too, but we're not getting deep into this. We are, my wife and I are actually coming up with a program where we're actually going to help walk people through this process. Um, and hopefully that's going to be coming out here in a couple of months. But the main thing is clear out your cabinets. You cannot, if you are truly carb addicted and you are trying to get off of it, you cannot have this in the house. Don't think, oh, I'm trying to eat healthy, but I still need to have something here for my kids. That blows my mind. Why would you say you don't want to put poison in your mouth, but you, you think it's fine to give it to your kids? Because what you're really doing is you're getting your kids addicted. You're not giving them candy. You're not giving them things, you know, that, oh, poor, poor little thing. They, they need something, you know, they need a, a treat. That is not a treat. That is poison. You are setting them up for a horrible, horrible future health life. So please don't think that way. You really should be thinking all your food should be coming out of the refrigerator. And, and to take, to take a snack, to have a treat, that's kind of like, you know, I say, oh, well, one little treat won't hurt. Realize it's an addiction. If this is a carbohydrate addiction and it's a true addiction, you wouldn't have an alcoholic and say, oh, it's not going to just, just have a sh just one shot of whiskey a night. That's not going to hurt anything. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You don't tell somebody addicted to Coke, oh, you can just have one, whatever, snort, whatever it is, you know, a, a day or whatever. It doesn't work. If you are addicted, you've got to get off of it. And in this situation with the food, there's so many nice, healthy, healthy alternatives that taste absolutely fantastic. And it's so much cheaper. 
It is amazing. All the people that go through the grocery store and complain about how expensive it is to eat. And you look in their grocery cart and they have zero food, no food, no food. All they have is all this crap and crackers, chips, cakes, pizzas, frozen. I mean, just, just frozen junk. There's no food. And yet they're complaining because food is so expensive. Here's an idea. Why don't you not buy that junk that's tearing your body up and causing you more pain and heartache and spend that same money on real food, real animal meat, real animal fat, real full fat dairy. Buy it from local farmers. Buy it from, from as close as possible. People that you know, if you can't find any fruits and vegetables, then don't eat them. You don't need them. There's no need for them. If you want them, that's fine to give variety. Buy your meat from local farmers. Go and buy a side of beef. Buy a freezer. Purchase a freezer and buy a side of beef. You'll be amazed at how expensive this, I mean, how cheap this is. Sorry. It is very cheap. Like I said, we just did a side of beef and with the whole beef and processing and everything. And this is after COVID when things are still expensive. It came to about $6 a pound is all we spend. And we have T-bone steaks. We have ribeyes. We have, we have everything. We have sirloin. We have roast. We have everything. Tons of hamburger. And all of it just came to an average of $6 a pound. So it is much cheaper to eat this way than spend all that money on this toxic sludge that we're finding on our grocery store shelves. So that's the main thing I wanted to tell you. Realize you are in a process. You'll know if you're in a process by looking at how your health was five years ago, last year, this year. And if it's getting worse, please realize, notice the warning signs, pay attention to your warning signs. And now I didn't mean to be so in your face, but I really, I think this is such an important topic. So please, please, please be aware of your warning signs. And if you are worse now than you were last year, five years ago, 10 years ago, you can change it. So please, please change it. Okay. Pay attention to your warning signs. So thank you so much for listening and have a great week. And remember, make simple, healthy choices to live a quality life.